I know what I want. I know what kind of God I need to be for you. For all of us. Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I watched Loki Season 2 Episode 6 at 22 Fabric Speed and found 12 hidden details that I'm sure you haven't seen before. Now I've already explained the ending of this episode, you can find that video right here. But now if you're ready for some amazing hidden details, easter eggs and hidden meanings, then get ready because I'm about to blow your mind. But before I begin, please spare me just a minute to thank today's sponsor, Surfshark. A VPN is a useful tool for staying safe online. It protects your information and keeps your online activities private by encrypting it. Now I've used Surfshark VPN for more than two years now and it's my favorite because it's easy to use and I can use it on a limited number of devices unlike other VPNs. I'd recommend using Surfshark VPN especially when exchanging important files, logging onto mobile banking or using public Wi-Fi. It can also help you find better deals when shopping online. For example, some stores have different prices for different countries and by using a VPN you might be able to find an amazing deal on the new computer you've been eyeing or even flights just by connecting to a VPN before you search. Now with the holidays approaching, I like relaxing to my favorite holiday movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Sadly, it's not available in every country on Netflix. But with Surfshark, I can change my IP address to Australia and connect to Australia Netflix, allowing me to watch the movie without any hassle. And there's absolutely no risk in trying Surfshark, since they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get a holiday special Surfshark 1 deal for the rest of the year by using my promo code CANADIANLAD to get a bonus 5 months absolutely free the link in my description. Number 1. Just after Victor Timely's death, Loki asks Obi what could you have done differently to save Victor. And Obi answered, we took too long. So Loki thinks he has to do everything faster. Which he does, but keeps failing every time. So he figures he not only has to do it faster, but also a bit earlier. But notice at one point, Loki hastened the whole process so much that they had the blast doors opened even before Victor Timely got time to put on his helmet and get the multiplier on his hands. As a result, the radiation from the temporal loom traveled inside this room and Victor died. Number 2. In episode 4, we got to see Victor's flesh and jawbone getting spaghettified. But in this episode, when Loki was redoing it again and again, we now see the skin on Victor's face getting ripped off of his skull. Man, it looks so freaking painful. Number 3. When Loki time slips to the Citadel to have a conversation with he who remains, here Loki looks at this blackboard with some equations having to do with time not moving in a linear way. But that's not the point. Notice here he who remains looks over his shoulder while Loki was still looking at the blackboard. Now this is a great continuity detail and let me explain why. In season 1 episode 6, he who remains consistently told us that he's in a hurry as the timelines are branching. Be better hurry, timelines already branching. So to make sure the story stays consistent, the writers made sure that in season 2, he who remains looks over his shoulder as well, checking on the timelines that have branched. This shows that the writers paid careful attention to season 1's ending while writing the final episode of this season. Season. Number 4. In the gangway, when Loki changes to his Asgardian form, his body was surging with temporal radiation. Now the temporal loom was created by He Who Remains, so it emits purple radiation. But notice every time the radiation would make contact with Loki's body, the radiation would transform from purple to green, indicating Loki's overshadowing the power of the loom using his magic. Number 5. When Loki was enchanting the dead branches, notice we can hear some very subtle human-like sounds as if someone's whispering or breathing. This foreshadowed that once Loki gains control of each and every branching timeline, he will become the god of stories, able to listen to all of them. That's why he was able to hear what Mobius is saying at the end of the episode. Number 6. After Loki replaces the loom with himself, the chronomonitor at the TVA now displays the timeline branches resembling the tree of Idrisol. Now this detail actually makes me happy. You know why? Because it means Mobius, Hunter B-15, Obi and Sylvie now know what exactly Loki has done. They now know that Loki has basically made a world tree in order for a proper flow of time across all the branches. Number 7. After grabbing a lot of branches, Loki looked up and saw this black rock sitting on top of this jagged fragment. Now notice these golden veins on the fragment were not moving. But as soon as Loki stepped on it, all of these golden veins started moving up, precisely towards this rock. And slowly these golden veins marble the uneven stone surface and flow up the legs of the chair until covering it completely, giving it the appearance of a gilded throne. 
So this whole process didn't happen automatically. It started as soon as Loki stepped on the fragment. It was him doing it. It was Loki summoning the gold to make himself a majestic throne that he didn't want this time but had to take it. Number 8. In this episode, we learn that the loom is a failsafe. It will basically prune any branches of the timeline to protect the sacred timeline. No matter how big you want the loom to be, it will always only protect the sacred timeline. Now if we go back to episode 4, this was basically shown to us but we have of course didn't understand it at the time. Notice on the chrono monitor, a heap of branches are on one side of the loom. But when these branches passed through the loom, only one was protected while the rest were deleted. So he who remains his explanation about the loom being a failsafe was already foreshadowed in episode 4. Number 9. When Loki returns to the time theater to ask Mobius how he chooses between who lives and who dies, there Loki learns a lesson from Mobius that there's no comfort, you just choose your burden. And in the next scene, Sylvie inspires Loki to come up with a new idea of destroying the loom instead of trying to fix it. Now notice in both instances, Loki, Mobius and Sylvie directly face the camera. The episode's directors, Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson, masterfully handle the direction throughout. Whenever the characters are learning something new or deciding to do something new, the camera almost always zooms in closely, often with minimal or no background music at all. What this does is, it allows the audience to feel the dialogue set between the characters even more. It's as if the characters are speaking directly to us. It's not only Loki absorbing lessons from Mobius or Sylvie, it's us, the audience, also discovering the story alongside Loki. Number 10. When Loki goes further back in the past and we see Victor and Obi meeting each other for the first time once again, Loki shows everyone the mock-up version of the temporal loom. Now notice what Obi says here. Uh, everyone, uh, Victor, so this model is not finished, okay? There's, there's only one coat of paint on this. He's saying it to everyone that this model is just a mock-up and has only one coat of paint in it. But notice he specifically addressed Victor after calling out everyone already. Uh, everyone, uh, Victor? Uh, everyone, uh, Victor? This shows that the only reason Obi was feeling shy was because of Victor's presence there. He didn't care about what others think, he mostly cares about what Victor thinks. Number 11. When Hunter B-15 asks Obi if he's sure this new Miss Minutes won't try to kill them all, this was Obi's response. And are we sure she won't try to kill us all? Yeah. But notice Case's reaction here. Even he didn't like the fact that Obi doesn't know it for certain whether Miss Minutes will go rogue again. Number 12. Now this one is a very interesting detail and I want to hear your thoughts on this too. So apart from the fact that Loki is a literal god and that's why he was able to withstand the temporal radiation, but there could be one more reason as to how he survived here without any protective suit. And before I tell you that reason, take a look at what Obi said in episode 1 about staying in the gangway for way too long. Well, the fast doors will close and lock you out. And then your suit will age away, you will age away, and you'll get very old, and all your skin will get peeled away, and you will die. Pay attention to the words, you will age away, and you will get very old. Now, the same rule applies to Loki as well, except he's a god who is infinitely stronger than Mobius. So the theory is this. So Loki being in the gangway for that long without a suit, he actually grew older here. And that's why his skin looked extra pale and wrinkly. And since Loki is an Asgardian and Asgardians grow stronger as they age, so Loki was actually getting stronger and stronger with each step he took absorbing the temporal radiation. Therefore, it explains how he suddenly got so powerful in this scene. And not to forget he had centuries of experience before he got here. And that's it. This would be my breakdown of the final episode of Loki Season 2 at Pointy Fabic Speed. Let me know your favorite detail from the video and of course comment your thoughts on the last detail. Now if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up, grab the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then I'm Morbius and I'll see you lads in the next one.